Let me ask you a question. How many times in your life have you failed? Me personally, I've failed millions and millions of times. Now, what's really important is it's not how many times you failed, but how many times you got up. See, Confucius, he has a great saying, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. Fantastic. So I'm gonna be teaching you some simple strategies that you can do to overcome your failures. I'll be talking about why I think most people have failures in the first place, and this is the reason why. Most of us, such as myself included, is we dream about these grandiose goals that we have. We want to create a billion dollar company. We want to have a six pack. We want to have you know, a brand new Ferrari or we want to have that perfect relationship with somebody. So we put everything on a pedestal this high and we go through the process of trying to accomplish this goal that's so high up there. However, that takes a long time to get there. It's like us looking at Mount Everest. We're not just gonna simply look at it and jump from the top of the peak. No, we go peak by peak by peak, eventually get there. And this is why most people fail. They, their goals are way too high. Now, I'm not telling you don't have amazing goals and big ambitious ideas and dreams. However, you need to break that down apart. Instead of having this big gigantic goal, you need to create small micro goals that you can win at, okay? Now, I'll get to that in a second. I just wanna kind of talk about a couple of main things that can kind of help you with the, the failure before we get into the micro things because that's kind of like the icing on top. So the first thing is when an individual fails, a lot of times we like to point our fingers at other people. It's your fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. But it's never ever my fault. No, God forbid it's my fault that I fucked up. No, we never think like that because remember human beings aren't rational creatures So the first thing that you have to do is take extreme ownership of your situation It takes a certain individual a certain human being to raise their hand and say it's my fault to raise their hand and say I take onus I take full responsibility for what just happened and as soon as you take full extreme responsibility and ownership of said failures, everything else opens up for you. You are in charge now, nobody else. All the power, all the responsibility, everything that needs to be done is on you. That's a major psychological paradigm shift that happens in an individual as soon as they take onus on accepting full extreme ownership. Number two, instead of then jumping right away and trying to figure out what your next move is, or what your next pivot is, pause for a second and reflect on your failure. Reflect on what just happened. I would analyze the failure and break it down. What did I do that caused me to fail? Warren Buffett, he has a great saying. It goes something like this, I may butcher it, but a smart man learns from his mistakes. A wise man learns from other people's mistakes. So I would analyze everything you did in that failure of yours and then create an, uh, a thesis on how you can never ever do that again. And I would also, before jumping into your next pivot or your next you know, goal that you wanna do, I would analyze other people's failures who had similar goals, such as yourself, and ask yourself, how can I not do these same mistakes they did? And how can I avoid the downfalls they did? Because they already laid it out for you. They've been there, done that. It's up to you to learn from their mistakes. Don't be a smart man, be a wise man. Okay, and then finally, get an advisory board around you. You know, a lot of times we're too much in our own head and uh, we get super thrilled and super excited for this brand new project or company or relationship or car or whatever it may be. And we don't really slow down to ask our peers around us. So get an advisory board and uh, make sure they're, they're your devil's advocate. Make sure that they question your motives. They question why are you doing this? And make sure they're not friend frenemies. Those are the worst. Make sure you're there, your true friends. If they're your true advisory board, true friends, they're gonna tell you point blank. It's like, hey Amir, I don't think so you should do this. Or hey Amir, you're an idiot, bro. Think of something else, okay? So those are simple, simple things that you can do. It takes me back to my first point I was talking about, and that's the micro wins. I believe this is out of everything I said, I believe this is the most powerful thing that you can do is these micro wins. And that is, so we said, you know, you want to reach a big goal. Cool. And you failed. Okay. 
what you can do to get back on the horse right away is give yourself small daily goals that you can win. So let's say you're running a business and you failed. You know, you can't get the startup off the ground. You tried everything. Well, a simple thing that you can do is like instead of trying to get a million dollars in sales or whatever your KPIs are, get one sale a day. And what this does is it releases dopamine in your body, in your brain, and, in, and now you create that gratification system, that gamification system. This is how video games work, this is how gambling works, this is how sex works. We're all driven by that dopamine relationship with gratification. So figure out small micro wins they can do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I would tie this in with the Jerry Seinfeld principle is I would have a don't break the chain. So for 31 days or 30 days in a month, every single day you need to get a win. And if you don't get a win that day, I would double that win for the next day. You don't want to break the chain. That's the whole point. Every single day you get a win. It's a compound effect. You know, you slowly start getting momentum. You start getting more motivation. You start getting more inspiration. You actually see something tangible being created in front of your own eyes as opposed to, oh, I need to reach this big goal, but nothing's working. You're actually seeing results on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, don't be the person that does this. You know, you, you guys probably heard this before. If the only tool you have is a hammer, then everything you see is a nail. Don't be that hammer. And don't nail everything down to the ground. Be strategic. Use the words of Warren Buffett. Be a wise man. Use the words of Confucius. Accept failure, yes, but study them. Study other people's failures. And create a system, okay, a system, a framework for success as opposed to going out there and blindly doing whatever you gotta do. I know, it's fun, trust me, I know. <laughs> I've been there, done that a bunch of times, and it's very painful. And the worst types of failures are those deep emotional scars that you have in your mind that's hard to erase, it's hard to overcome. So the more you can become strategic, like a chess player, like a general, and analyze the system you're about to do, the more success, or the more likelihood mathematically you are to have success. I hope you really enjoyed this video about how to overcome failures. What I'd love from you today is leave a comment below. I'd like to know what your systems are for overcoming failures, and if I can help you in any way, like I said, leave a comment below. Have an amazing day. Adios, peace.